Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Deep Thoughts. And today we are talking about Fruits Basket episode 23, You Look Well. Now, before we get into this week's episode, as always, I want to say a quick thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter, namely at DarkfirePlayer4, at the Chillas N1, at Morgan Romero, at Haru the Weeb12, at Supporter Tier and C, at Anime Lover2427, at Jay and Theo21, at Isabella Copi, and at Days Will. Thanks so much for sharing last week's video, you guys. It is super appreciated. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Fruits Basket video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's Fruba video. So with that said, we're gonna jump into this week's Fruba video. It is sort of a more chillaxed episode, more laid back, and I think that's because We've only got this week's episode and then two more, so something tells me that this was mostly just like a calm before the storm. If these subtle nods I've been getting online have been any indication, a lot of people have been trying to be like, brace yourself, boy. <laughs> There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne, so I'm trying really hard to kind of brace myself for that, and I do think this week's episode was meant as a sort of like, a setup in a way, and also a sort of like, this is gonna be your last second of calm before we just destroy your soul for the next two weeks. So I am going to go ahead and just embrace the calm that was this episode. That said, we're gonna kind of tear into each little piece of the episode, namely starting with the whole school aspect of it. Now, the, the grades aspect of the show is interesting, because Toru actually failed a class, which I genuinely found surprising. Toru's usually so diligent and, and hardworking, but at the same time, like, she is so diligent and hardworking. At some point, she was gonna botch something, and that's only because, you know, Toru's human at the end of the day. But she really took it hard, to the point where she actually got herself worried sick, which is only all the more ironic when you pair that against Hanajima, who failed all her subjects and was not even the least bit worried because she knew she could just make it up with the makeup test. But Toru doesn't even acknowledge the makeup test. She's just totally at a loss for words about the idea that she failed. Even to, even with Yuki and Uo like trying to be as supportive as they possibly can, she's just not having any of it. And Kyo is more just sort of baffled by how hard she's taken this. Even after she collapses from being sick, he's more just like, are you serious? <laughs> like, it's not that big a deal. Like to him, it's, it's sort of baffling. Especially since we don't know if Kyo passed all his classes or had to take a makeup test. I don't know if he did. I, I don't think he did. But it's just interesting how Kyo sees grades in a totally different light to Toru. But this is, of course, because Toru made a promise to her mom, to Kyoko, that she was going to pass uh, her school, that she was going to pass high school. I would assume that the promise would kind of continue into college, but maybe maybe it was just high school, I don't know. But either way, it upset Toru. And obviously because she was, she's already stressing herself out by trying to be so hardworking across the board at, at her actual work, at school, at, uh, at the Soma's house. It was bound to take a toll on Toru at some point. I'm honestly surprised that it took this long, like almost towards the end of the first season for Toru to really like fall hard to just how far out she that she stretched herself. And I think it, it just shows how genuinely good Toru is that it she stretched herself out so thin it made herself sick. And the fact that she was so worried about the fact that she promised her mom she was gonna pass every class. So of course she's gonna feel like she let her down, even though she totally didn't. But of course she's also gonna feel that way. And I don't know, it, it felt like a very genuine reason for a character to become sick. Like it felt pretty, pretty appropriate. And speaking of getting sick, let's kind of talk about the reaction to Toru getting sick because I think it's interesting how the Somas all stepped up immediately, like imme quickly and without question stepped up for Toru because Toru goes so far out of her way for them, of course they would in kind do the same for her. Momiji stepping up at work, Kyo stepping up around the house and Hattori stepping up to check on our girl. Hattori, by the way, my boy, my boy, Harry, <laughs> my boy is stepping up in a big way. And um, I appreciate too when Toru says like, hey, how much how were the, how much was the medicine? What do I owe you? And all Toru does is just laugh and says like, hey, get, you get well soon, Toru. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's my husbando right there. That, that's, <laughs> that's my good man right there. And it was, uh, it was interesting seeing Momiji like 
step up at work and of course going to check on her. We also see Kisa show up as well amongst all the other Somas. It was it was nice to see everybody just coming to the rescue for Toru and like checking up on her. Yuki giving her notes to help her with her her uh, her makeup test. It was it was really I, I don't know to, to me it was it was really sweet. But of the Somas, of all of them that that stepped up to help, I thought the most interesting bit was Kyo. Kyo stepping up, not because I, th I was surprised that he, he would step up, especially like the fact that Kyo even goes so far as to cook for for Toru and he even says like, it's not as good as yours. But it, and, and the fact that we see him reading a recipe for, for like flus, like for people with the flu, I was like, are you serious? Kyo, man, going above and beyond. What I thought was interesting is when he's carrying the tray of food, right? He looks over to the side on the balcony where Toru usually does the laundry, and he sees her, even though it's just like in his head, like a mirage of her, before walking into her room. And I, th I think it's just the idea that even when she's not around, and he, he does say this, like when she's not around giving the, the sort of Toru smile, like always being upbeat and happy, it really throws him off. So the idea that Toru is sick and needs help is throwing off his balance a little bit because he's so used to the roles being reversed of Toru like being there to listen to him vent to help him out so for him to, to have the roles reversed it almost sort of hurts like he's not used to that anymore which really goes to show just how much they've become reliant on Toru and I don't mean that in like a negative way I mean that in just like how much she has become an important part of their daily routine of their lives how important she is, and I, I, I assume this is gonna come up in the next two weeks again, because they really put an emphasis on it, to the point where I was like, man, now y'all know that I stopped shipping Yuki as much with Toru. Uh, in the beginning, I really shipped Yuki Toru, and now I, I more ship Yuki with Hatsuharu. But Kyo and Toru, I was always sort of like, eh, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I always used to think that it was about Kyo and Kagura, since they really put an emphasis that Kagura like is obsessed with Kyo, but I'm starting to see the show kind of hinting at a Kyo Toru relationship, which I think is interesting, especially when he like says, if you need to vent, I'm gonna listen. Like it's, if you need to talk, I will listen. Even though Kyo is not a great talker and is still working on his communication skills, the fact that he's like, okay, I'm not a great talker. That's fine. I usually vent to you, go ahead and vent to me. Like stepping up to, to be the Toru to his Kyo right now. And Toru like breaking down, explaining why she worried herself sick. And Kyo just being like, <laughs> Kyo being the ultimate tsundere of just like, that's why you're upset. That's ridiculous because you're so awesome and great. And I totally don't like you or anything, Baka, but like, you know, you'll be fine. Which is like, <laughs> tsundere Kyo, which I guess is just Kyo in all stages of his life. But like Kyo is Captain Tsundere and I, I'm kind of here for it. And again, that that scene with them talking, I was like, oh, I, mm, starting to ship it. Something something's going on here. Uh, I'm starting to think maybe, uh, like for sure, Kyo has feelings for Toru, but I'm starting to think maybe Toru's catching some feelings, catching some feels for Kyo. And the Kyo attention is all over this episode because it doesn't just stop there. We get that scene with them in the rain, with Kyo being all sluggish and like not really feeling himself, like something's very wrong. And, it, and then we get Kagura actually showing up in the episode as well. And they all go on like surprise dates, which I thought was kind of funny, mostly just because my, my other husband, Oshiguri, is just like, get out of my house. Y'all break my house when you show up. I can't take it. But it's it's interesting, the, the rain scene, for, for two reasons, right? Because one, I was not aware that Kyo was sluggish in the rain, which I, I guess that explains why the OP is, is all rainy, because it, it was leading to this, I guess. But it, I, I was not aware that Kyo got sluggish in the rain, but it, it didn't look like he was just tired. It also looked like it really like affected him. Like he could hardly stand at one point. I'm like, okay, what in the high hell is going on with my boy? But then on top of that, and this leads in towards the end of the episode, somebody was watching them and was surprised to see Kyo smile at Toru. And then this comes up again after the grocery scene. But before we get to that, I do want to talk about the grocery scene. And that's because Kagura, Kagura tells us some stuff that is kind of going to kill me because it, there is yet more 
Soma Family Secrets. Now y'all know, one of my favorite parts about Fruba is the Soma Family Secrets. I love learning more secrets about the Soma Family. However, comma, this one feels dark. <laughs> like this one, like the way Kyo reacted, like screaming at Kagura in the middle of a grocery store is very Kyo, but at the same time, I'm like, What's going on? Like, what's like, what's what's the symbolism with the beads? What's the the whole reason why Kagura? Is, like, cause he says like, if you really liked me, then like normally you would distance yourself or like just just try to avoid me. So so why are you so obsessed with me? And she's like, are you serious? And but she doesn't tell him. So she's keeping a secret from us, and Kyo is keeping a secret from us, and Kyo is in turn keeping a secret from Toru. So it's like, okay, I love the Soma family secrets. And I am very intrigued by this one. However, what are you hiding from my girl, Kyo? I can't, I can't, I can't, in good consciousness, sign off on a Toru and Kyo ship if you're keeping secrets. A good relationship does not keep secrets, Kyo. You gotta tell my girl before I can sign off on this. And this eventually, th this grocery store trip, eventually leads us back to Shigure's place where we see a guy with a ponytail named Shisho, Shisho, Shishio, something like that. Anyway, uh, first of all, that is a well-dressed man. That guy is looking pre pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, but my, my concern is is great because he shows up specifically for Kyo, and then the episode just ends on that note, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? I'm very nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous. And then I saw next week's title, Let's Go Home, which has me quite concerned. So something's gonna pop off with a secret. It's probably gonna have something to do with the Shishio guy. He's probably gonna try to take Kyo away. And I ain't ready for any of that. Like I am very concerned. With that said though, everybody, I am gonna give this week's episode a solid B grade. It's it's a very cozy, very pleasant episode, very, very, very fun watch. Although I am very nervous for the remaining two episodes now. Something, something's not sitting right with me and I don't know what it is. I sense a lot of emotions in my future is what I'm worried about. I feel like a lot of emotions are gonna happen next week. I guess we'll just have to deal with that as they come. But before I take off, everybody, I do, as always, have to give a big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon. And we got some new patrons this go around as well. So let's go ahead and start with Calvin Atkinson, Crowbar of Irony, Dominic, Urza, Ginkotaku, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Mirth Mouser, Nye, Omner Garamond, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Steven, Tristan, and Varadin. Thanks so much for supporting me over on Patreon, you guys. And if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then by all means, go ahead and check out the first link in the description. Check out the Patreon page. See all the cool rewards you can get over there, as well as access to our Patreon exclusive Discord. But on that note, everybody, that's going to be a video. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. And if you did, you've probably been on the internet long enough to know what to do already. So I ain't going to tell you, but I will say that it is appreciated. And if you're feeling stressed out today, you go have yourself a warm cup of tea, and I'll talk to you all again real soon.